Okay, hold on, hold on. What was that? What are you having a rave, Eli? Whoa, look. I'm like here. What are you doing? And then I'm not. I can see the tip of your head. Wait, I'm I here. I can see, see your arm. hand. Yeah, you're you're not disappearing. You're really not. <laughs> no, no, this is on. pathetic. Like jump scare. I can still see you. <laughs> you. This is so pathetic. I just put your light on. Let's start. <laughs> no, wait, hold on. Right. You're in the camera. You are in the camera. <laughs> Whatever. I thought that would work like a jump scare. No, it video, didn't. Video hijinks. Huh? Video Wait, is hijinks. it? Did you guys start the podcast? Uh, yeah. Wow. That's did. going. That's <laughs> going. That's on video too. Alexa, turn off Planet Vegeta. No, leave it on. Oh, Otherwise really? I can't see you. Turn on Planet yeah. Vegeta. Still getting used to this video thing. Yes, people. His room, sure. as per Alexa, is called Planet Vegeta. Planet Vegeta, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of weird. All right. Okie doke. Oh, geez, and Sim. By the way, sound check. Hi, sound guys. check. Check, 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 check. Oh, wait, Let's is that see. too loud? Yeah, kind of is. Oh, that's fine. Check. Is this too low? Oh. Kinda is. Check. Perfect, right? Yes. Hmm. So we're talking about a thing today. You know, one of the coolest uh, cars that are like ever out there, like in the world of worlds. Hmm. What the heck? I think I like... I don't know. It's not the Warthog like you think it is. Um, Fictional cars that should have made That's the car show. The Tumblr. Nope, not even that. Wow. The Ghostbuster vehicle. Nope. Actually, this is one you should know. Hmm. The ray gun, the ray gun tanks from Godzilla. Mog is not an acceptable answer. Mog is not a car. Hmm. Oh, that's what you're doing. <laughs> Thought. Um... All right, but what was your? What, what did you say? Who? You. The ray gun tanks from Godzilla. Probably. I mean the ones with the with the crane. That's kind of cool, name. yeah, but not that one either. Are you asking his favorite car? Fictional. For AJ? Yeah, fictional, fictional car. It's either gonna be Knight Rider or the Impala. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> But baby's not real. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. I, I changed it up no. at the I changed it up at the last minute. Sorry. Uh, I changed okay. the prompt un unknowingly. Mine's okay. is um not fair. <laughs> yes, not What's fair. Sorry. Oh god. McFarty. Oh McFlarty. <laughs> the scientist uh, dude. Moriarty? No, that's not his name. No. Mc Marty. Marty McFly? Hey. Marty McFly. Yeah, his car. He's not a scientist. Oh, that's the kid? Yeah, it, Dr. Brown is the scientist. Oh, yeah, I like his car. The Fast and Furious. The Fe DeLorean? Oh, I'm not Fast and Furious. Fast and Fe <laughs> <laughs> All right. This uh, sound check has gone for way too long. Back to the past? No, 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 no. Back no, to back the to past. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, back my to the future. God. That's what I meant. Back to the future. That's what I meant. Stop. <laughs> That's bad. Yes. All back right. To the past. Sound check over.
Hey everybody and welcome to the CrossGen Podcast. I am Walt and I am joined by my two other fellow hosts and podcasters, AJ and Eli. Guys, say hi. Goodbye. Hello. No, goodbye. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Hi. Goodbye. goodbye. Yes. yes. No. Maybe. Yes. I don't know. All right. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, we had a pretty lengthy podcast because Eli started a rave and AJ started to talk about something related to what we're going to be talking about here is cars. So, yes, um, we. Oh, here we go. Again. Okay. 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 I'm done. <laughs> really just stop okay. doing that. It's yes. annoying. So, yes. Today. We are going to be talking about, complete with video, the 2022 New York International Auto Show. So the auto show, it's been gone for two years. Last year, we actually had tickets for it, but because of coronavirus, I think the Delta variant was kind of like surging at the time. They did cancel it, so we couldn't go last year. But this year, it's back, back at the Jacob K. Javits Convention Center. We went on Thursday this past week. Um, for Eli, this is your first auto show, right? Mm-hmm. Um, AJ, this is your second. Yes, not that and I'd remember the first. About, I can't believe you don't remember the first. But then again, you were kind of a bit younger. Um, you literally wanted to jump into the back seat of every car because you were so used to being in like the car seat or in the back seat the whole entire time. But um, for me, this is going to be my fourth or fifth, maybe even my sixth. So, but it's been a while. It's been a while. So mm. I'm kind of old hat with with this. But what about you guys? Did you enjoy going this year? Eli it was your first time. AJ. It felt like your first time since you don't remember the first first time that you went. But what do you guys think about it? How was it? I mean, I'm not going to say I'm a car enthusiast. It's not really my thing, but it was it was pretty cool, especially some of the stuff we ended up doing with like Ford and Kia, even though there was mm-hmm. this whole thing with the actual kia um but the actual kia i guess spread that you know we we all couldn't go because apparently some of us were too young but ford did it It it's kind of stupid oh no that was hyundai okay hyundai Hyundai. okay yeah all right sorry kia not trying to disparage you i'm just trying to disparage hyundai there we go yes all the all the tracks were available to us except for Hyundai because for whatever reason Hyundai decided that 14 or younger could not go on their tracks or 18 or younger right I think something yeah like yeah 18 or younger yeah so we didn't get to go on the Hyundai track that they were they were showing off their Ionic EV over there which that's not even going been in, interesting is that even going mm-hmm. in production. Oh, it's it's already out. Oh, the Ionic. Yeah, yeah. You could you can probably go and purchase one now. Um, mm. I would have liked to have seen what the Ionic looked like inside and how it drive drove, but whatever. It is what mm-hmm. it is. So, what about you, E? You, mm-hmm. I think AJ's not as much of a car enthusiast, although he does enjoy his cars. Um, what about you? Um, I mean, the show was pretty, uh, enjoyable. I mean, I had fun, definitely, for sure. Um, I noticed, like I said, um, before, when we were talking, there's a lot of, uh, things that I felt were missing, but most of the Mm -hmm. things that I saw, I could still, I was still entertained by or interested by. Um, you know, we, there were a lot of, um, really cool concept cars. That was interesting uh, to look at. And then I got to learn a little bit more about the, you know, the utility aspect of cars and, you know, how the interior plays a lot, um, you know, into cars and stuff, stuff like that. So um, 
I was pretty interested by it, by it, and it was enjoyable. I enjoyed it. All right. Well, just to give people history on the auto show, the auto show has actually been around for a while. Um, the first, the very first New York auto show actually opened back in November of nineteen hundred in the original Madison Square Garden. I mean, we're talking about this show is now what one hundred and twenty-two years old. Twenty-two. That's a long. That's time. crazy. You know, um, and so what the what the auto show does, obviously, it 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 shows off all the cars. So. For people who are looking to buy new cars, an auto show is is a great place to start because, yeah, they show our concept cars, but they show new cars as well. Like, for example, when we, we have a Kia Sorento, a 2019, we were able to go and see the brand new iteration of the Kias, not only the Sorento, but the Sportage and the, the Telluride. The, and, and so it also gives you a chance to go see the competition as well. So, you know, maybe you're shop in the mood to shop for Kia, but maybe the Ford kind of interests you. But now if you're doing this on the regular, that means you have to go to a Kia dealership. Then you have to go to a Ford dealership. Then you have to go to a Jeep dealership. You know, this way you can see all the cars in one <laughs> shot. And if you can actually get into some of the cars and if you like it, maybe then you go to the dealership and say, let me test drive it, let me see how it is, and go from there. So that's one aspect of the auto show that I think a lot of people utilize it for. But it also offers a glimpse of the future because, again, we have the concept cars, right? And so the concept cars are kind of showing what cars in the future might look like in -hmm. terms of not only design, but the technology that's put in there, right? And some of that technology finds itself not only in cars like the Toyota. Uh, one of one of the things that we're going to talk about, the Toyota Rhombus, right? They were showing how that car was also going to impact, um, what should we call it, wheelchairs and autonomous robots and things. So the technology is not only for the cars, but it goes into other industry industries as well. You know. Um, so this year it made its return after two years. What's interesting is that not all the car, um, manufacturers, the auto manufacturers were there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, BMW I, I know this. There. Mercedes wasn't there. Honda wasn't there, right? Like mm-hmm. I Kira, was, um... Mazda. I was looking forward to my, like, I'm not, again, I'm not, like, the super huge fan of Justice or whatever, but, like, I do enjoy looking at Acura and Cadillacs. Yeah, like, those are those two of two my go-tos. There. And that's sad. Those two weren't there. Buick, GMC, Jaguar, Land Rover, Tesla, and Rivian, they were all not there. So, there was a big, a big big hole there that that we didn't see did they ever say why that is they just choose not to participate i I think it kind of like it kind of falls into the whole you know e3 the electronics um entertainment expo where you know these manufacturers are are starting to realize you know what maybe we don't want to share you know the the stage with other people let's just create our own shows you know Mm -hmm. um and i I was reading uh an article where you know one of these um one of these guys who kind of like try and figure out things they also kind of posited that they were like you know what maybe what happens here is that they're they don't want to go and spend you know the amount of money and expense it takes to bring cars to the auto show to staff the auto show you know, to prov- to get the insurance, especially in a, in an age where everything is digital, right? You can do these 360 videos and kind of show off the car that way. Mm-hmm. So I, I think a lot of it plays into, you know, the reason why these guys didn't show up. I know BMW, for example, has their own events, you know, mm-hmm. so maybe there and that's a good way to say, well, you know what? Here's BMW. I'm not showing you the competitors. I'm just focusing on my car or mm. cars, 
on my lineup, you know. So maybe that's a reason why they didn't show up. But it's kind of disappointing, right? Yeah. Because like you said, you and I know Eli, you were kind of interested in seeing what Lamborghini had, right? Yeah. They only had like what? Two, two cars. cars. That was it. So they didn't, there wasn't too much uh, to offer from Lambo. But I mean, overall, it was still pretty interesting to look at, you know? Yeah. So let's talk about the layout before we actually get into the videos and, and, and show everybody the stuff that we found interesting. And just mind you guys, um, a lot of the stuff that we're going to show you on this podcast are not going to be regular cars. We kind of, you guys can see regular cars on the road, you know, pretty much every day. We kind of wanted to focus on cars that we enjoyed, but also some of the concept cars that look really, really interesting, right? Um, but let's let's talk about the layout of the place first. The first thing that you see when you're walking into the Jacob Javits Center is that Jeep track, right? Yeah. And ridiculous oh, line man. that I refuse. So can, can you to describe? Wait on. Can you describe that? All right. So basically, everyone was waiting on this insanely ridiculous line for a kind of, I guess you can call it a jungle gym for this new mm. Jeep. Um. So what they did was they had like this pretty steep incline going up like that and it mm. went down yeah, it also like kind of like a roller coaster it was like a 45 degree angle and that thing went what like 20 to 30 feet up in the air right yeah it was like insane it's horrible high. yeah and then it looked cool there was also this other thing where when it drove over it you could kind of see like one wheels like practically all the way down you know like the hind wheel but the oh the wheel on the other side is like all the way into the thing it looked like yeah so awkward and like i don't want that to happen to my car but here this car is just doing it because it can <laughs> oh i think i think in that case what they were trying to show is the off-road capabilities so like if you're driving on rocks right i guess that was meant to kind of mimic rocks and stuff and like how rocks are up and down and the ability of the jeep to be able to drive through that with no problem right yeah so that was pretty interesting unfortunately we didn't get to it because like aj said that line was the line long was man horrible no. oh my gosh you will not get like, we got right there what line. we got there mm -hmm. at 12 o'clock right and the line was insanely long and we left at about, I want to say, 5.30, 6 o'clock. And we walked by there hoping that the line had gone down a bit. It which did. Which it did, but right? once you look at the, because there was a tent Inside also. that tent? Yeah. When mm -hmm. you look inside that tent, it winds and curves like a, like a snake. And I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> no. Mm. That looked right there like it was going to be a 45-minute wait at the very least, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Maybe more. Not, well, not, yeah, like you said, the very least. Not worth it yeah, for me. So it it, it kind of sucks. Um, but once you get packed, past that, because that's on the outside, right? When you actually get into the building, um, that's where you kind of see everything happen. So the Jacob Javits Center, is, is they had three floors that they were showing off. The bottom floor was the EV track, right? Mm -hmm. Which was basically pretty much the entire bottom floor. And it had, that's where they were showing off, you know, a number of uh, auto manufacturers were showing off their EVs on this track, which had a straightaway and kind of like a slalom and a whole bunch of turns and stuff like that. Overall, it's basically like what a two to three minute drive right yeah that sounds right you know um and then on the first floor obviously you had the main floor that's where most of if not all of them were showing off their wares right and then Kajit up top will show you wares yeah exactly <laughs> and up top on the third floor 
that's where you had more of the aftermarket stuff, right? Yeah, that where, was you know, a really annoying it. place to walk through. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and why why do you say that? Because, like, not for nothing, I get you're trying to do your job and you're trying to sell these products, but every, like, five seconds when someone is going, here, 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 get over here, come check this out, bro. You will not regret it. Hey, look, you have glasses. Bring them over here. I'm going to polish them for you. No, no, don't walk away. Come here and let me polish your glasses. No. We were getting bombarded, bro. Yeah. I swear. It's like walking through the makeup section in the mall, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where everybody's trying to stop you. Try this perfume. Try this makeup. Try this lipstick. Try this thing. Yeah, that it it is a little overwhelming and stuff. But um, I think we spent the least amount of time on that third floor we kind of just checked it out and then ran right quick (laughs) two minutes yeah we were out of there real quick you know there was some interesting stuff i mean remember that solar car solo car the solar oh the oh Oh, no (laughs) yes oh my god that was the most just the most hideous car design i've ever seen in my life no i I told you, like, like go some, look at. That's something you yeah. find in the in, in the freaking playground. No, like where, 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 it, it where those kids they 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 see the car and they're like, "Oh, daddy, let me go in." Woo! No, no. gross. It was bro. basically a table with uh like a little yeah, that's bubble a, in the it was middle a table. that people would sit in. Right, that's literally what table. I said. Like. I, I told him, I told Andre to go look at the car, check out the car, because there was a car right next to it. No, no, there wasn't any car. And you were like searching for the car, and it was like literally right in front of you. And then you realize it's a solar car, and you mistook it for like a table. It was so <laughs> crazy. <laughs> oh, it was a little weird. It was a little weird, but hey, it is what it is, right? Yeah, it's still cool though. Yeah, yeah right, so agree let's, to disagree. let's talk about huh. yeah. So let's talk about some of the cars, right? So the first one that we saw when we walked in was this brand new uh they haven't even they haven't even started production on this car, right? And that, that's the the Deus Veana. Deus right? Veana. Yeah. What what do you guys think about that? Deus Veana. Nope, Deuce Vena. We got a white boy in. Deuce Vena. Oh. <laughs> no, but De- um, I don't know. Um, aside from the very interesting name, uh, I mean, it looked kind of cool. I mean, mm-hmm. at least for me, it didn't particularly stand out, stand out. But I have a very, I have, I have a very specific kind of taste when it comes to looking at cars so i'm not the best person to ask but that's the i mean it looked kind that's of the white okay. one yeah yes. the one that looks sort of that like is, a that is a yeah that is a car that literally the the company deus it's mm-hmm. it's founded in Aus- in austria they f- they started in 2020 that's how wow. new this company is they're really fresh off the boat and during like yeah. the yeah, worst yeah, really. year in existence and and it's mm-hmm. funny because we went on a thursday the debut of that car was the day before mm. so you know this this that means that the people that came in on friday april 15th didn't see this car oh. because that the day before Exclusive. was the first time that they showed it Hmm. So, this thing is supposed to give out two thousand two hundred horses worth of horsepower. I, I mean, that, that damn. sounds like a lot. And I'll take your word. For well, yeah. let's put it this way: if if you get this car on the open road, a top speed of almost two hundred and fifty miles per hour, and it does zero to sixty in one point nine nine <laughs> seconds. Tira the okay. zero to okay. sixty okay. in one point nine so, seconds. So, okay. so think of it this way: our and just just so that you have some context, our car is driving on the highway at sixty miles per hour from a dead standstill. 
this car can get that fast in less than two seconds. Dang. Okay. That's pretty good. And in perspective, we're going to talk about this later. The experience that you had in that truck. Oh, God. Well, it's not a truck. It was think a, of, like a, a minivan or something, right? I don't know that it was No, a no, truck. no. We were in a pickup truck. We were? That was a pickup truck. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Fort, that was a pickup truck. Oh, okay. Huh. So that, that makes it even weirder. <laughs> but yeah, I know, but the, but think of it in this perspective. That truck did it did zero to sixty in double the time. Oh oh jeez. Dang. Oh jeez. Oh so, jeez. Oh wow. Okay. We would have covered that amount of of space in half the time in this car. Wow. Damn. Imagine the That's whiplash on that. Oh, oh yeah, it, it'll be it. insane. Oh, I don't want to imagine. Yes. Wanna. Yes. That would so be this amazing. car is going to be exclusive. They're only going to build 99 of them, and the first one is probably going to roll out in about three years' time in 2025. Mm. So you got that. Um, the next car that we saw, another concept car that we that was toward the left of the entrance that we walked in, um, that's the Toyota Rhombus. I think. I yes, think, sir. I think Fucking AJ can design. talk about this a little bit because he's got a vis- very visceral response to that. Right. Second worst. Well, what's, what's up with the Toyota Rhombus? Second worst design that I just did not like at this car show. I don't like it when the car is like a literal cube. I, I don't like. Make it a little. Make it a little smooth on the top, but like, why? Why you gotta make it a cube? Why is it a cube? Well, it, the good thing is that it's a concept car, so this probably will not make it to production. Good, um, good. No, you, I want this car. It looks so fire. Yeah, get it for yourself. It has, mm. That's not a cube, bro. Yeah, it is basically kind of got a tumbler look to it, right? With the with the way the back is, if you look at it. What do, what do you yeah. guys think about the interior? Because the interior is very unique, right? I actually uh, did not yeah. get to see the interior. I was that the interior off by this car. No, it's really cool. If you look at the, like like the steering wheel, it has like uh you know those screens. It has the screens and it it sort of drives like um, you know those boat thingies. I don't, I don't know. Like it reminds uh, me of a like a joystick. Yeah, it like, has like joysticks. A plane, like a plane. Yeah. Plane. And it has like the screen in the middle. It looks cool. I don't I don't get why you have a problem with this car because this car looks insanely cool. It's Apple. a four seater. Well, mm. Yeah. And and what about that front seat? Because that front seat is a swivel chair. It's one so the front seat is only one one person can sit in it. And in the back, it has, like, the three-seater, so it's almost like a little oh. mini couch, right? Mm-hmm. And that chair can swivel, which means, obviously, this car is an autonomous car. It can drive by itself, right? And you can swivel your seat to the back to talk to your three passengers over there. That's cool. What do you think about that? That makes this car even more dumb. Why are you taking your eyes off Why? the road? I'm not even a driver, and I know that's a cardinal rule of driving. But it auto drives. But why are you gonna like, take obviously your eyes don't off put the audio road? Away. I mean, probably you're taking obviously your complete don't. attention away from what is supposed to be in front of you, and literally going, "Screw that! Let me have a margarita with my buddies, or a beer, or whatever the heck kind of drink you like to drink." I mean, obviously, you don't put all your faith in um an auto driver, but but still, you're basically like, doing that when you're light? turning around. At a stoplight, when you need to hand something to somebody, and maybe you can't reach or something, I don't know. No, that's that's helpful. That's very helpful. No. Well, it's the promise of um, self-driving cars, right? Mm-hmm. Tesla's already there with that, um, to varying degrees of success. Because for the most part, you don't hear a lot in terms of the auto drive, but as, especially at the very beginning, a lot was made because, you know, the car couldn't figure out something and it would crash or whatever. But um, 
Tesla really started this whole revolution, and so far it's going pretty good. I mean, it looks like that's the future of driving now, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, well, there you go. That's that was the Toyota Rhombus. Um, it was, you know, it was developed by this company called TMEC, a research and development shop out of China, and um, you know, it's probably it, like i said it's probably more proof of concept because right next to it that was one of the one of the things that i was talking about where they were using the technology in you know wheelchairs self-driving wheelchairs um these autonomous robots that can bring things to you you know either either from like shopping or kind of like an amazon type thing so you know the technology i think is key to this car more than the car itself mm. you know so there's a perfect example of technology over you know form and function right mm -hmm. um the next thing that we saw we were still in the toyota shop and uh we got a, a look at some of these toyota supras um how'd you guys look at it there were three of them that they had there was another concept car that we i didn't get to film um, we did get the convertible, the hardtop, and the racing model. What you guys thought? What you guys think about the Supras? Listen, the only thing memorable for me about Toyota was when that kid went up on stage, and the guy said, "We're gonna gift you and your family, your family, your very oh, no. own Toyota backpack." <laughs> That Bro, wrong, right? that's just like he wrong. literally sounded like he was about to hand them out a car, but just the way he switched it up at the end and just said backpack, like oh, he even said 2022 new, and then he just no, bro, like come on, you can. You don't have to do that to like a five year old kid, that's a little bit too far, that's a stretch. Oh man, that was that's horrible, kind of bad. That's you know. weird as hell. That was funny. <laughs> um, that was wrong. That's yeah. what it was. Still well, cool. did did you did you like the the racing the racing model? I mean, the the racing model looked pretty pretty cool. In yeah, my, in my eyes, right? What was it like the GT four or? Yep. Yeah, it was the GT four. Yeah, it looked mm -hmm. super cool. I liked its designs, everything. Um, I mean, it was it was pretty cool. I can't say much about it. The interior, I think we went into one of them. I forgot which one it was. Um, I think it was but, the hard top. Oh, yeah. We, got into. we went into the hard top. The interior was decent. I'm not going to say too much about that because it wasn't – it was sort of basic, I believe, if I remember that. But, right? Yeah. There wasn't too much I mean, to it. it. Like I said, it was, it's a regular production car. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they're just showing it off you know for people to look the concept car is interesting but i didn't we didn't get a chance to to look at that that much because a lot of people are around it so kind of moved on um we did move on to another thing which was probably at least in my mind um one of the highlights of the show right and mm -hmm. that was the subaru, subaru. enclosure subaru. Right? Yeah. subaru subaru has an amazing really went all out right yeah super yeah. was amazing like I mean, not even just the cars but how they presented it everything that yeah. went along with the cars just uh like fully immersed you in like the subaru experience i guess it all felt very zen yeah yeah very it zen. did it did like the first the first thing that they showed off was their two classic rally mm -hmm. cars right yeah um and complete with videos on on you know one of them had had the guy racing a freaking biplane and stuff like that <laughs> while he's driving in the countryside at 150 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone you know like <laughs> like some of the stuff that they were showing on Ew, those screens were insane he clicks it, oh absolutely but you know, it, it, they kind of highlighted before you before you even walked into the enclosure, which is huge. I think if if you look at it, it probably took at least maybe an eighth or more of the entire show show floor. It did, right? Mm -hmm. It was yeah. ginormous, right? Mm -hmm. Um, 
but the first thing that you see is is kind of their a callback to their legacy, which is that you know Subarus have been famous for their rally cars, right? Yeah. And so you walk in with that sense, and then you have the big arch that has Subaru on it, and then you you're completely trans transformed, yeah. and you know you're you're brought to this whole new other place because. Now you're in the forest and the mountains and the woods. The way they did, we, we even walked through like a, a pseudo cave, right? Yeah. yeah. Full With like super like cool types. colors. Yeah. Kind of reminded yeah, so, I mean, me of Elden Ring, how purple the the interior was. It reminded me of like going. No, no, no. It reminded me of going through um, uh, Lyurnia, the lakes. You know how sometimes there are those huge areas where they have like the oh, big blue and purple crystals. crystals, like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. but there was definitely a lot of, you know, they definitely know how to showcase cars and stuff. Oh yeah, and you yeah. know, it it just shows you that they're they're really environmentally conscious. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, uh, a lot of the things that they were showing were you know just how you know their 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 focus on you know protecting the environment which is a subaru thing because when you think of subaru you think of outdoors you mm-hmm. know with their forester and the outback um and what about what about that whole visual montage they had it, it looked like they were pulling from the rockies right yeah that oh they had a where... a bunch of different uh national parks that they had on display i think i saw yellowstone was one of them you probably had mm-hmm. death valley there too um bunch of places yeah so they gave the Rockies, like i think were yeah. there also mm-hmm. they gave like really nice visuals to go um to go along with their theme that's for sure yeah, you know, I mean, you, you were especially Im- impressed by the whole thing where the 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 screens, it's like three or four <laughs> huge screens, right, showing yeah. water, and then toward the bottom where they have, I guess, their presenting area, it kind of, on the floor, it kind of, the, the, the river just continued on the floor and stuff, right? Yeah, it looked, and if you stood on it, it looked like you were floating. The cars looked like they were floating as well. Yeah. And there was a lot of green, a lot of trees, a lot of landscaping that they did. So it was really, really cool. Um, the, one of the highlights of, of that particular um, presentation was the Outback, because that is probably the most popular model that they have, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, the good thing is that they're, it seems like they're going to refresh it with the 2023 version. You know they're they're changing the front, the exterior, and it's it's going to look more like their new all electric SUV, the Solterra. So they're kind of trying to, you know, have that visual language across all their models, which is really really cool. Um, but like I said, that was probably the most zen. Yeah, for sure. The most relaxing part of the show. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, there was even a point where we can climb up we, the, the staircase and we were up on the log bridge yeah. overlooking everything. Mm-hmm. So th- their presentation was really, really cool. I, you know, I, I got to give Subu props. Um, they probably did win presentation wise um, the New York Auto Show, right? Yeah, that's for sure. All right. The next exhibit that we we saw, which was uh, right by there and and to the left of that, I believe, was the Saratoga Car Museum. So that's interesting because it's upstate New York. They have a, it appears like they have an auto museum where they showcase some of the older cars. One of the things that they showed was the Cobrera C300, which is kind of like a classic Shelby Cobra, but updated to, you know, I guess twenty twenty two standards, maybe, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. It's supposed to be faster. It's got more amenities. You know, you can actually put screens on it if you want. It's very customizable. So, and clearly, it's going to be very expensive. But some of the other cars that they showed, they showed some really old cars, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They had the the Jaguar, and 
What about those those cars that were really dropped down to the to the there was the oh, Nissan president, oh, right? Oh yeah. That like no. That was so you would die any he- if the if a person like you or me sat in that car and tried to drive it, it'd just be dragging itself along the ground. No. Like why would you do that to a car? Like <laughs> Oh man, I it's mean, gonna be like scraping the floor. Unless you have the thing where the tires like, and you know it does the whole what do you what do you call that where the where the car goes did it did it did it did it did it. Oh, uh, like the the West Coast thing. Yeah, hydraulics. Yeah, they're like that. hydraulics. Like yeah. if it had that, it kind of makes sense. Much, but even then, yeah. like. That's pretty horrible. You can't. It's undrivable. Yeah, you can't um, drive that in New York. Yeah, the first pothole. The first pothole you meet will destroy the entire car. <laughs> yeah. So, so <laughs> that place crazy. had, yeah, that place had Jaguars, BMWs, Toyotas, Mazdas, and other different cars. It was a nice little nostalgic look. Um, it had the uh, the Toyota Supra that was. That the same model, it wasn't the same car, but it was the same model that was featured in the first Fast and the Furious, mm-hmm. you know. So it was it was kind of nice to look at those cars. They had um, a pretty interesting, like, I think it was like Japanese car. It, it kind of reminded me of that. And I'm pretty sure it was. Um, and it was like super, super cool. It had like a different vibe to it. It was very squarey. And, you know, I just found its design to be, like, interesting, you know, yeah. visually interesting. Yeah, I think that's why it's in the, the auto museum. They want to make sure that they preserve these cars, you know. Yeah. Um, because these mm-hmm. are very unique cars. Um, mm-hmm. Speaking about unique cars, I think this is the one that kind of wowed us a little bit also, right? Yeah. Um, The Ford the GT. GTs. <laughs> yes, sir. Already know. Tell me. So, the Ford GT presentation um was all of its own it had it was on a raised platform these two cars mm-hmm. because they had the original gt40 mk2 race car that completed the 24 hours of le mans back in 1966 it's Ooh. a famous car a famous car right mm-hmm. oh. and right in, sitting right next to it was a brand new ford gt kind of paying homage to that car because it was the painted successor. the exact same way. Mm-hmm. Beautiful cars, right? Yeah, exactly. The Ford GT will always be like... Um, it was okay. Uh, huh? It was okay? <laughs> I I don't know about that. Listen, but like whatever. I said, my, my taste in cars is, is, is very particular and you guys might even say skewed, but... That's just me. Oh my god! How could you not? Ugh. It's the four GT. Ford yeah, Ford it's twenty inch wheels. I mean, those things are monsters, right? Those things are huge. So, and, yeah. Um, j- just the design of it, you know, that that is definitely one of my favorite Ford vehicles of all time. Mm-hmm. And seeing yeah, for both sure. of them at the same time next to each other was just like a wow moment for me. Mm-hmm. Especially, yeah, definitely for the the original GT looked fire. I don't know. Anyway, all right, here is where things get interesting mm-hmm. because we're going to be talking about the Ford oh. built to electrify experience. One of the two tracks that we were able to get on mm-hmm. uh, in the car show. Two of the three tracks inside the Jacob Javits Center. So this mm-hmm. is one that was showing off the Ford Mustang uh, Mach-E, the electric version of the Ford Mustang Mach, the SUV. And mm-hmm. they were also showing off the Ford F-150 Lightning. That's the car that we actually got into. Yeah. So. I'm going to let you guys describe what happened. Oh, man. Because that was crazy. That was, that was probably one of the wow moments Yo. also for you guys also. Yeah. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> Yo, Andres. Point, I think it was at this point. It's actually funny because I'm young <laughs> now, but I think at that point Yo. in the car show is when I really started waking up. Like, <laughs> Yo, Andre's scream was crazy in the video. Like, you were just like, whoa. <laughs> it was crazy. But for real, like, when we when we were driving, I'm pretty sure this is the one that goes to, like, 0 to 60 in, like, yeah. 2, 3 seconds. And it was just crazy. <laughs> the whiplash. Oh, my God. Just thinking about it now, it's, like, just so crazy to me because I felt like my heart was jumping out of my chest. For real. <laughs> Your heart, I felt like my very soul was being ripped out of my body. <laughs> yeah, we could tell. We could tell. But the video that we took, it like Jesus Christ. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't show how fast the car is, the no, video, not right? At all. Like like if you look at the video, it looks pretty tame. But I, I remember I actually got a backache for like a couple of minutes because of that that's how no that's how much whiplash i got from that and you can kind of see the jolt in the video when it happens <laughs> but i think i think the thing that really got you guys there was no warning Man. i mean even yeah. though the guy said are you guys yeah. ready with electric vehicles it's so weird because they're quiet. they're so silent so there's no. no rev of the engine it's just and you're gone yeah it's crazy. And I think I think that's the thing that kind of caught you guys by surprise, right? Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. For sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. So the the F one fifty that we we were in, um, as stocked as 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 built, that was a ninety thousand dollar Ford pickup truck. So um ninety thousand? Ninety thousand. I mean, I can see why. With everything, though, you know. I mean, it had clearly everything. You know, the big screens in front. Um, you know, leather, full leather interior. Uh, it had massage and heated seats on both the front and I believe the back also. But mm -hmm. I think the biggest takeaway was that jolt off of the yeah, line for sure. the sixty. You know, for sure. I think that's the thing that we'll remember the most out of that. Right. That was crazy. That was weird. Yeah. So from that, we we kind of walked away and we jumped into, we didn't jump into, but we saw another car that's supposed to be as fast, if not faster. And that's the Chevrolet C8 Corvette Z06, Corvette. right? Um, yes, sir. That car's a beast, right? For sure. I, I, it looks so cool the way they made it and everything, you know? Yeah, for me, the interior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then I'll go on. No, 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 you go, you go. All right. Well, you're probably going to say something like super in depth. I'm not. Most yeah. of these cars, whenever I see them, they're mostly tied to transformers. So all I really thought of when I saw that car was like, oh, hey, look, it's sideswipe. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 Why? I no. did the same thing when I saw the Chevrolet Camaro, right? And I was like, hey, look, it's Bumblebee. That's, that's Bumblebee. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, the car looks fire, though. Like, if you look into the interior, it has, like, this nice red color uh, that kind of goes well with the exterior. But even still, like, um... You know, it's kind of interesting. I I don't. I can't really tell. I'm I'm gonna leave this to you, Dad, because I don't know how basic this would be considered or anything like that. Well, the model that we saw was not an EV. Uh, it's not an electric version. It's still a gas aspirated car. Um, it is a V8. Right? Mm -hmm. That does zero to sixty. In two and a half seconds. So it's pretty not good. as fast as some of the cars that we've seen, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's I mean, that's pretty, pretty good for a gas-propelled car. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, sure. that's pretty much up there with some of these electric vehicles that, that we were looking at. Mm -hmm. um, the, the ones that we saw were about eighty six to $90,000. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, 
because they're they're kind of on the higher end, so they have the special specialty trim packages and stuff. Um, but they they kind of say, well, you know what? We're about as half expensive as some of our rivals, so you know, come buy us and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? So Bye. so that. Um, yeah, I mean, would you do a a Chevy Corvette? Yes, for sure I would. See, I mean, it's. it's I would not. It. You know why? Because why would you get such an absurdly fast car only to drive it at like twenty miles an hour in your day to day life? That makes no sense to me. Looks cool. That's why. <laughs> some people, t- some people actually track their cars, so they actually they actually go and take it to the track. Oh, so. oh, okay, well, all right. That makes a but lot even of so. sense now. It's kind of cool to show off, I guess. Yeah, see, I'm I'm not right. like that, so nah. it just oh, well, the the next exhibit was the Lexus exhibit. Super um, expensive. Hundred and two thousand yeah. dollars was the car that we were dri- we were we were sending in. Yeah, that was the Lexus oh. LC five oh. hundred. Um, it is. I mean, you know, twenty one inch wheels to this thing. This is updated. You know, they they have this is they're really pushing this thing called the bespoke build configuration mm-hmm. where you can kind of customize your car, you know, and um, sounds interesting. They, yeah, they I mean, wheel design, color accents. You can e- even put a, a carbon fiber roof, which is the other one that we saw, the blue one behind it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know, one hundred and two thousand dollars. This this um... is kind of. This is kind of um, rivaling. The, it's in direct competition with you know the Porsche 911 and the Chevy Corvette. Would you pick this car over those two vehicles? Lexus's design no. isn't even really all that, to be honest. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm no, even even it's not no. It's not enough that I would choose the uh choose it over the Corvette, cause I mean, it looks cool, but like at the same time, you know, it's not as visually interesting. And like you said, is it is it uh good again, or like in terms of like engine wise and like oh like, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a heck of a car, mm. you know, so. But I mean, uh, even still, like one hundred two thousand, I'm saving twenty. Or like no ten thousand, um, basically with the Corvette. So, yeah, it's not it's not the better choice in my opinion. Okay. Um. Then we moved on to the Lincoln. The Lincoln. Lincoln. Uh, there, I got. I finally display. got some time to shine. If I can't get Acura or Cadillac, I could at least get Lincoln. So the main focus of the Lincoln exhibit, right, was the 1956 Lincoln Continental that actually belonged to Elvis Presley. There we go. You're, yes. you're more of an old school type of guy, aren't you, AJ, right? To be honest, like, I would be fine. Like, this is how plain and probably utterly absurd you'd find me. I'd be fine with just a Lincoln town car. Okay. Like, and then, of course, as you get, yeah. it really depends on the design of the older cars, because some of the older cars can get a little lacking in terms of design. But, like, mm-hmm. that that Elvis car was really, yeah. really slick. And, and it, amazingly, it's the actual car. I mean, this one was originally in the Presley Motors Museum in Graceland. And uh, they kind of loaned it for the auto show because this is also the hundredth anniversary of Lincoln. Whoa! So, um, hey, there we go. That's, cool. yeah, that's so pretty cool. It was, it was, and apparently, the King Elvis Presley was a huge fan of Lincoln because he bought hundreds of cars, and supposedly he gave he he bought like two hundred Lincolns. <laughs> Hey man, Jesus he knows Christ. what's up. He gave Just away Lincoln's... some of them. He knows what's up. Like he like he gave away some of them. Just like there was there's there's a rumor that 
you know, in in a, a shopping spree that he had in the morning, he just gave away 32 cars, 32 Lincolns, just wow. like that. So, um, <laughs> you get a Lincoln, you get a Lincoln, we all get exactly. Lincolns. <laughs> <laughs> So it's crazy, but it, it's a, it is a beautiful vehicle, and it it is in tip top shape. Yeah, mm-hmm. it certainly looks you it. Know, that's definitely something that um you know we had to check out. Um, the other vehicle which we also saw we we kind of jumped in was the Lincoln Corsair. I think uh he had a he had a reaction to that Corsair, right? Um. Yeah, you so took, you took a you took a selfie in that bad boy. Yeah, the Corsair definitely did look cool. I liked its screen thingy because it had a really lit screen. You know those like uh, the computer uh lifesaver screens or like screen mm-hmm. saving things. The screensaver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially with like the Mac where it's like with like the rainbow colors. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what, it had a screen just like that. Not the rainbow colors, but it looked so interesting with like the screen and how it was like, like stars and stuff. And so like that's sort of what intrigued me, um, aesthetically wise, of course. Um, but like, I mean, otherwise, uh, the rest of the car wasn't too bad. Uh, there wasn't much to it, in my opinion. Um, the seats were kind of comfortable. Um, but otherwise, there were screens like, everywhere, though, right? Yeah, the screens. Uh, there, there were, were screens in the back seat. There were screens by by. There were screens all over the place. Yeah, in this car. that's you know? like what drew me to this car. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's 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 a direct competitor to some of the crossovers that you know, Acura, Audi, like the BMW X3, you know, mm-hmm. Mercedes Benz GLC. Those are the the things that it competes against. And surprisingly, guess how much this car is. So cheap. I can guess. Yeah. Uh, forty thousand. Forty thousand. No, it's it's between thirty seven and fifty three thousand dollars. So it's it's wow. That's, that's cheap for wow, that car. I'm surprised. That's hella cheap. God damn. That's like that's less than like if you were thirty seven thousand is like less less than like a Charger or a Challenger. It's like in that price range, sort of. Yeah. Just know that when you get 37000 though, you get like the just the base features. But you yeah. don't get any of the fancy stuff, you know? Yeah. You can so buy as, like... As you get fancier. You can buy like two mm-hmm. of these for the price of one Lexus. <laughs> yeah, that's cheap. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I would basically. prefer two of these over, over just one Lexus. No lie. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, there but anyway... Go. Anyway, all right, we're gonna we're gonna head over to the exotic section, which, Ooh. in a, in a way though, it was kind of disappointing though, right? Because they really didn't show all that much. Ah, uh, um, yeah, it was it was a little bit dis- disappointing. No lie. Yeah, you only I mean, saw one Audi, and again, I'm not even like oh, a yeah, super I mean, Audi fan, but like sideways. Mm. <laughs> Another transformer. If you don't get yeah. it, they, they oh didn't god! <laughs> I mean, but this is this is the place. This is the place where I think he he like kind of was happy because they did show off the 2023 Lamborghini Huracan Tecna. Yes, and, and that's it significant. was that is significant, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it was it was definitely really cool to look at. Uh, it has like six hundred thirty one horsepower, which I don't know how good that is because I'm not that yeah, well versed in that. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, I'll trust. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. Um, but yeah, it was it was really interesting. They also had um the Urus, which is I I think that was the SUV sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and it has 700 horsepower, which is kind of crazy because the Huracan only has 631. Um, wow, so the four-door has more than the two-door. That's actually yeah. kind of weird. <laughs> that's, well, that's interesting. In a sense, not really, because the mm-hmm. the SUV is a heavier vehicle, so it needs more power to push it through. Oh, oh. yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so, 
but they were they they're very they're definitely very interesting uh you know so yeah. it's it's a shame that they had it kind of like behind those bushes because mm-hmm. you couldn't really get too close to the vehicles you know and and in that enclosure they they also had two rolls royces they had two bentleys um they had two porsches one of them being the panamera um and i think there was an alfa romeo there also but i'm not 100 percent. i don't remember but the the point of it is you couldn't yeah. really get too close to the cars unless you were a vip and then if you were a vip you could walk around and literally just be right there with the cars so it's a little how dare you that... get too close to god you peasants <laughs> no, god. yeah exactly it's it's a little disappointing um the next car that we saw oh my gosh oh we're going to talk oh about this gosh. one right am i the, the is grand, it the, yes. the grand wagoneer L. oh that thing L. was huge that was a beast yeah for sure a beast that starts at $102,000 that's pricey I mean, yeah. yeah. Nah, nah. Well, I mean, look at all the stuff. I mean, was yeah, in there's spot, a lot man. of stuff in it, but still, it's, like, yeah. I, I mean, I'd say it's worth it because the the amount of features it has, you know, it's it's very, it's like you said, it's it's a pretty big car, and I mean, the interior is just, I mean, the interior is literally just the main highlight of the car, in my opinion. Um, maybe you guys can speak about that. Well, l- let's talk a little bit about the car itself, and I, I, yeah. I need to, I need to talk about this because, like I said, it's such a, an intimidating and, and yeah. a, a ginormous car. It the is. car is riding on a hundred and thirty inch wheelbase, which is seven inches longer than the standard model. Right. Mm-hmm. This car, the Suburban, the Chevy Suburban, which is traditionally the king of huge cars this car is bigger by at least two inches damn chevy's got a chevy's got a beat back now they gotta be back now yeah so let's put it this way you know the space behind the third row no right so the so this is obviously a third three row vehicle right And Mm -hmm. in each row, you have plenty of space for six footers. I mean, you know, literally, I could probably sit in the in the third row and be super comfortable. Right. But this is the crazy part. And this is how big this car is. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the space behind the third row, the the quote unquote trunk of the car. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where you put all your stuff. There is enough space in that back part it is as big as the space you get in a second row of a regular car damn think about that what so i'm yeah i'm confused as well (laughs) the cargo space behind the third row offers the same amount of space that a two row vehicle would offer like a hatchback or let's say our car for example so what you're the saying space. essentially is that you could fit two extra rows if there was a no- if this was a normal car. Yes. What, what the hell? That's wow. What? Stop. Whoa. Stop messing with my head. Whoa. One, one extra row. So this could be like a four row vehicle. You know what I'm saying? And sit them comfortably. <laughs> That's in that cargo crazy. space behind them. <laughs> Jesus. And bring the whole That's congregation out, out for breakfast. <laughs> Damn. The, the the car is six thousand pounds, and that's the lightest version. Okay. Um, <laughs> we didn't realize, please. He was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and, and let's let's talk about how how powerful this car is. Mm-hmm. This car, if you wanted to tow something, you would be able to throw to. to to tow, I, I can't even say it because it's oh. so ridiculous. Ten thousand pounds worth of stuff. How this much car can move. So How like much a is boat. That? 
No. Think about maybe five to ten boats. Wait, what? Ten thousand pounds. Five to ten boats. Like, what boats are we talking about? Like, are we talking about like speed boats? Uh, like, like the ones we see on the highway when 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 we're like the back from Long Island. Like the bigger boats. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, you're you're looking at you're looking at. Ah, uh, no. Come okay, on. Let's, let's put it this way: a typical trailer can weigh about a thousand pounds. Okay. Just think of that. So, so ten trailers. It can, it can take ten trailers. No, what come on. Actual no, I'm sorry. A speed a speed boat is about eight thousand pounds, so I, I take that back. A small fishing boat, however, a small fishing boat is about one thousand seven hundred pounds. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you can you can conceivably <laughs> tow yeah. about five to six small fishing boats with this. <laughs> I was about to say that <laughs> car cannot tow five <laughs> five of those big boats. <laughs> That's too crazy. No way. But still, like, uh, what's it? The trailer like weighs about one thousand pounds. That car can still tow like ten of those, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, um, it's, it way. has best in class towing by far. You know, mm. um, wow. I'm not even gonna talk about fuel economy because with such a huge car, <laughs> does it even really matter? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Jesus. So, but the car is insane, and it's beautiful. And you know what? Um. I think we were all wowed by it, right? For sure. Um, well, after all those metrics, how could I not be? <laughs> mm-hmm. so, so that was the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. We're going to talk really, really quickly about these next two cars because they're not really – they're special in their own way, but um, they're just regular production. Yeah. Vehicles. We're talking about the, the Challenger and the Charger. Now, the Challenger RT Scat Pack um, – it's basically a street legal muscle car for drag racing, mm-hmm. you know. Um, oh. And so we got in. It was pretty. It's pretty nice, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was. Looked, yeah. I mean, like I said, it it is your it is your standard thing. It's just a super fast version of it. So that's why we're not going to spend too much time on it. But uh, as a as a guy who loves Dodge. Um, but never been in a Challenger. I was surprised at how small, and I'm a big guy. So for me, it was a little difficult to get in. Um, but still a very, very beautiful car, right? For sure. Um, and super powerful also, because like I said, it's it's basically designed to be at a track and just you're going to race the crap out of this car, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but the other one that we were gonna we were gonna highlight, and the one that surprisingly I was actually a little bit more of a bigger fan, is the Charger SRT Hellcat Jailbreak in the frost blue. Um, what is that, that was name? Cool. I know. Well, SRT Hellcat. The, yeah, and and this is the jailbreak option because, and the reason why they call it the jailbreak is because now you're not constricted. It's customizable, you know, kind of like that Lexus mm-hmm. with the bespoke edition. This one, you know, there are, there are certain trims that, you know, you have to unlock to get certain colors, certain, you know, brake calipers, certain wheels. With the jailbreak, you get everything. So you can customize, you can grab from, you know, all different trims and throw them into this thing. Um, Why was it so restricted was, before? Well, it's it, cars generally do that. Car car manufacturers generally do that because you know what? They want you to pay more for more features, right? So this one, they're giving you the option. It's more expensive, obviously, than any of the other chargers, but you kind of get to pick and choose and make the car your own. So mm, That's expensive. It's kind of cheap. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, like when I say cheap, like it's kind of cheap of them to do that, but yeah, but it, it is what it is, right? Yeah. Um, all right. Um, we're we're getting to the end of this, and we're getting into some funky vehicles now because now we're going yes, to be talking sir. about the Volkswagen ID Buzz, oh. which is going to be AJ's next car, oh. next car. Oh. Wait, is that the, the 
That's the Walmart. That's the Walmart. The, the mystery machine, right? The Scooby Doo <laughs> truck. Yeah, the Walmart shopping cart. That's so amazing. Yeah, it's their their take on the the vintage T1 microbus. No, it's yeah. uh, all electric. It's huge inside, right? Oh my god! It's like, like the target. If there if if there was anything that better embodied bigger on the inside, like Eli said with the TARDIS, it's this <laughs> incredibly Jesus wacky Christ. vehicle. Oh my! It looks. I mean, it may not look that cool, but it can be. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. What you're gonna put flames on the side? Ugh, that's kind of whack. The the mystery machine. Scooby Doo. Just paint it. Paint the paint the um, what is it like the bumper? I guess that something like that, like blue, and then put like the Walmart logo on it, and you have a Walmart shopping cart, <laughs> literally. But it looks it it is crazy, kind of cool. The interior well, is interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because this is the European model, which is already out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the guy that that was presenting it was saying that the American version which still hasn't come out yet, but it will be coming out really soon. Mm-hmm. Um, they're actually going to throw a third row into it and make it a little bit longer. Wow. So. It's going to be cool. No. <laughs> yes. yes. So, um, Buzz. See, no. The ID Buzz made me sneeze. ID you know? Buzz. Buzz. Oh, my goodness. But I mean, it, it looks really cool. It's gonna have LED lights all around it. Oh, yo! Someone make yo! Stop! <laughs> LED light. Someone make this. No stop. way! Really? Yes. Make it happen. Yes. Make it happen. No. It needs to come out soon. Yes. It'll, it'll be coming out pretty soon. Um, probably later this year, but. Definitely a car. I can see this car being a big hit in, in like California, where all these the surfer guys putting their surfer oh boards on God. top of this thing, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's definitely looks cool. like a car like that, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's got a, it's got a vibe to it. A vibe, know? yeah, to say the least. Right. To make a quick turn, right? Yeah. Nestled all the way in the back of a mm. car show. Yeah, which we found pretty odd, mm-hmm. was the NBA Finals trophy. <laughs> oh my God, that's oh, right. Man. <laughs> Wasn't it like Larry sponsored by Kia? Brian. Yeah, it was. It yeah, was in the I, Kia. I guess that's what yeah, it was, yeah. right? The Larry O'Brien Championship Trophy, all the way in the back, <laughs> where literally what we stumbled upon it and said, "What the heck is this?" And at first we thought it was fake, right? Yeah. Yeah. But then, like, the security guard said, no, nah, it's real. It's real. <laughs> In we the like, Kia section. Does... Yeah, and we were like, Kia. what does the NBA trophy have to do with the auto show? Exactly. That's she... <laughs> but that's when she she schooled us. She was like, well, Kia is the official sponsor for the NBA. And we were like, oh. Yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. Kia. That's kind of weird, right? Kia didn't really, for me at least, Kia didn't really have much to offer. So I guess that was like, for me it did. It didn't have much to offer. My friend, are we forgetting about the Ev9 already? Yeah, let's talk about that now. Oh, wasn't that the concept car? Yes, Yes. the super swanky transformer looking concept car. (laughs) Oh my god, stop. Everything behind is transformers. But look at the wheels. Look at the wheels. Oh, that's that one. Illuminati confirmed. No, don't say that again. That's oh no. This car okay, okay. I'll give you this. This car looked amazing. Yes. Like amazing, amazing. And like, you know, like the visuals around it. It just went so well with it. It did, right? Yeah. Yeah. But like I, I, a lot of it was like ocean based. I know. <laughs> it made the car blend into it, but it's like perfectly. The car's not gonna drive on the ocean, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I get the color palette and all, but you're not gonna drive Yo. on the ocean, guys. Man. I mean but unless it, it has fire. an aquatic feature. <laughs> That we don't know about. 
aquatic. The first, <laughs> there's no the cars that do that. The first boat <laughs> car to ever exist. <laughs> Kia did it, folks. An aquatic, <laughs> an aquatic feature. <laughs> well, this is a concept that actually is going into production. This is a this is a car that you will see nice. on the road. Um, it's it's kind of fire that that will they're promising 300 miles of range on one charge which is pretty impressive um mm-hmm. and it's probably going to hit the dealership sometime next year uh the one thing that unfortunately we couldn't do is really get a good look at the car and stuff and the interior because it was kind of on the, the platform um but it does have suicide doors you guys know what that is no. i've heard of it i don't know what, what suicide doors is that are. The doors open like this. What? So the back door, the front oh. door opens this way. The back door opens this way. Hmm. Okay. The back door this way, and then the other one this way. Hmm. They open up. Right. Do you understand? Yeah. I, I, I think, think I, think I do. I having a hard time visualizing it. Do you, you remember pull it the up? scene in The Matrix? Okay. The the see. Lincoln Continental that they that they got in in the very first Matrix under the bridge. I think so. Yeah. The door, the front door, opened the regular way, right? Yeah. But the back door opened opposite. Okay. Yeah. I I think yeah. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So instead of both of them opening up like this, uh huh. Right. They open up like this. Okay. So you have right. easier ways to de- the whole thing is open. Gotcha. This car is gonna have that suicide doors, you know. Mm. So um, damn, it looks interesting. It looks yeah, interesting, but it doesn't it look looks like amazing. The problem is it those suicide doors may not make production though, which is sad. No, the, the car still looks pretty cool. I'm, I, I'm not is, sweating yeah. that. Yeah. And so the the other concept car that was there was the EV6. Uh, the EV6 unfortunately does not look like it's going to make production. We could talk about that a little bit later because that's the car we actually got to test drive downstairs. Uh, yeah, that yeah. Track, I was gonna right? say that that was the one from downstairs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was the GT6. Um. Nice looking car, I have to admit. You know, the I like the, the back the for sure. car. Yeah, the back looks cool, right? And the interior also, right? With all the LED trim that it has, that that pulsing blue light that kind of went through the dashboard and stuff. So, um, interesting car. Uh, I, like I said, I and like AJ said, the back looks cool, right? But unfortunately, it doesn't look like it may make, you know, production. But, hey, that's a car we were able to get into, and it was pretty, pretty cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Pretty swanky inside, you yeah. know? It had that huge, huge screen uh, right in front of it. Yeah. So, it was okay. You know, yeah. It is what it is, right? Yeah. Um. So the the next and that is a a five passenger car, you know. Um, but five, again, yeah, five passengers. So you Damn. two in the front, three in the back. So mm. unfortunately, may not see it, but we'll see. Maybe no. maybe it influences another car. Next up, the Taco's real favorite. best car, the true Taco best car. Zilla. Oh Taco yes, Zilla. Zilla. I could not believe Zilla. that that was the actual name for this car. Like someone in in the boardroom said, "What are we going to name our next car? Maybe we should call it like the GS nine seven or the 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 BlackBerry whatever." No, let's just call it Tacozilla. What Tacozilla? Yes. Yeah, Tacozilla. It'll it'll be a Actually, hit with the fans. Trust me. Yes. You know All right. You know what, <laughs> Go. <laughs> this is actually a one of a kind vehicle. Yes, for sure. You know? It is. It, it is no, literally, like there's only one of its kind. Wait, the one so in th- front of us. Was, that was it. That that one there. That's it. 
they don't they don't there's no other tacozilla in the world except for that one that one was based off a toyota tacoma pickup truck and it was built in 2021 uh for the aftermarket show sema oh okay. so it was designed and built by this guy called marty schwart schwarter right marty schwarter um, schwarter yeah and it was it was it's a hundred percent custom built right so but this thing in the back <laughs> i mean it has a full shower and tub it yeah. has a, ref- a mini refrigerator it has a stove and um a, a little mini kitchen don't forget a toilet it a place it has a toilet oh yeah <laughs> forget the toilet, the toilet. Right? <laughs> Um, it's got a little bench where you can sit down and I guess you can eat your food. And then up yeah. top is where you I sleep love. on the, on the top part, right above the your bedroom, you know, the cabin of the car. Mm-hmm. Um, but. yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting, right? Very. First displayed in Las Vegas. So no chance that there's, there's ever going to be more. No, no. This this is no. pretty much this is pretty much all you <laughs> no. I mean maybe maybe if you can uh you can talk to this Marty Schwarter and see if he can trade it in for a bunch of tacos, but Jesus um, Christ. Tacos. Yeah, Tacozilla is and will remain a one of a kind vehicle. Which we got to see, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm at least glad to have so, seen it then. Yes. Wrapping up. Wrapping up, we are like a burrito at the EV. Oh yeah, my god, don't. <laughs> oh, why? Like a burrito. No. <laughs> AJ's gonna create the burrito, the burrito zilla. Oh my, the bro- no, bro- zilla. no, how would you even the king burrito or the burrito? burrito. That's so lame. What about the quesadilla? <laughs> oh, the queso. The 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 queso the queso gyrus. The queso. Stop gyrus. entertaining oh, this! <laughs> no, that's disgusting. Oh my god! Oh man, no! All right. Anyway, uh, we're gonna wrap this Chalupa up with the last damn. thing that we saw. <laughs> At the car oh. show. Oh, gosh, oh, gosh. Stop, 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 stop. Yes, please. <laughs> oh. All right. The last thing that we did was the EV test track at the at the bottom floor of the Jacob Javits Center, right? And over yeah. there you had um, Kia, I believe. Um, there, were, there was a bunch of, of you know, Deus was car there manufacturers too, I think. there. Yeah, I, I do believe, you know. Volvo was there, um, mm-hmm. so they had they had a bunch of cars. We chose to jump on to the Kia uh, EV6 GT, yeah, um, and we jumped into a red one, so it made a super swanky. What do you guys think about that? Because uh, the experience was kind of cool, right? It was a huge space. You had the straightaway, and then you kind of did like the whole slalom and and hairpin turns and all that stuff. I mean, what do you guys think about that? It was it was okay. Um, um, it was definitely a lot more tame than its Ford counterpart. Like, I right, maybe not that much more tame, but with Ford, you it really felt like the commercials. Have you ever felt like you needed to go to the store at nine o'clock at night just to get yourself a burrito from Seven Eleven? Well, then the Ford GT is just right for you. Oh, man. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, like, the, the EV6 wasn't too bad. I think uh, it was it was somewhat fast, somewhat not. Um, I think so, it was really, I think what Dad said, I think it might have been the driver, really. Yeah, the, the driver probably. Yeah. But, I mean, even so, it, it was okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the EV6 is not the fastest of the cars that we saw because it goes 0 to 60 in 3 under 3.5 seconds mm-hmm. um which is which places it a, a little behind the the Lamborghini Hur- Huracan, you know, um that we saw. 
So it it could be partially because of the the driver. The driver was not as aggressive, and you know it also may be in part and parcel with the car not being as as fast as some of the other vehicles that we were in. Um, the other the other models that were on display there was the Chevy Bolt, the Indy EVs Indy One, the Nissan Leaf, the Vinfast VF8, the Volkswagen ID4, and the Vol the Volvo XC40. So those were the other choices that you had if you wanted to jump into a car. Um, I thought it was interesting. Oh I it was no, fun. no, 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 no. I don't think it was Deus that we saw. It was it was it was Vinfast. They were the yes, other the they they were the other new uh car manufacturer that was there. Yeah, it, it wasn't Deus. Unfortunately, we don't have yeah, unfortunately we didn't get much footage of that um because we were actually listening to pre- the presentation. The guy was doing trivia, right? Yeah. At the time with the cars. Um but that's one that we kind of missed. But, I mean, overall, it was a pretty cool experience, right? Yeah, it was, it was pretty interesting, um, to say the least. But, I mean, anyway, like, yeah, I think I think it was just our driver. But the whiplash was still crazy, as as per, I mean, because it, yeah. it did go fast. You no could still feel it's still it. a fast car. Yeah. Yeah. It's still a fast car. I mean, I think... The car that we have, the Kia Sorento, it does about zero to forty in about six to seven seconds. So, you know, th- yeah. think about that in those terms. You know, the EV6 does that in approximately half that time. So, there is still a little bit of, and again, the whole thing where it's an electric car, you don't feel it, you don't hear it until it's too late. Mm, yeah, exactly. So, so you had that working there, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah, that I mean, that pretty much wraps up our experience over at the car show, at the auto show. Um, enjoyable, very enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, we spent about six hours there, and we pretty much saw everything we wanted to see, right? Basically, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't think we missed out on on any of the the presentations and whatnot. No. So, um, I mean, it was we a good, caught it was the a end good, of Vinfast, I think. Yeah, like he was full trivia mode. I'm like, yeah. whatever, you know. Um, but you know, do we go back next year again with the book bags? But I mean, oh, God. <laughs> sure. I mean, I guess. Yeah, it was yeah, an interesting hope- experience for me. I, I mean, I'd be fine with going back. I'm I'm hoping that some of the car manufacturers change their minds and actually try and come back. Give me know. Acura. Give yeah. me Cadillac. <laughs> Hopefully. Let's see. Yeah. All right. So we're going to wrap this one up uh, today. Uh, thank like you, a burrito. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope oh you... Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Like a what? Like a like burrito. A burrito? <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my gosh. Jesus Christ. It's horrible. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, yeah. And, oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Burritoville. Oh, Welcome God. Welcome back to Burritoville. <laughs> uh, guys, I guess you guys haven't seen the Saturday Night, Lights, Saturday Night Live skit. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Justin Timberlake? Nope. Okay, I'm going to show it to you after this podcast. All right. On that note, uh, please remember to review and rate and subscribe to the CrossGen podcast. Let everybody know about this little podcast, the little podcast that could. Um, and until next week, I am your host, Walt. Guys. Eli. Uh, out. Yeah. This is AJ. And, and what do you say? Yeah. May our don't car say may, no no that, <laughs> no 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 no, no. no I was thinking about that no and that's I was like that, that's, that's horrible that's yeah fest, that's yeah I'll, I'll, I mean I could go with it may our car pass but without context it sounds kind of may our may careers our as race car drivers cross again I don't know. 
That's way too complex. Yeah, honestly. it is. May our crossovers cross again. Yeah, because the you, you did Why? say something about a car that was a crossover, even though it was a little meh. Mayor of Volkswagen. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> everything, everything that I say is just car again. crashes. Mayor. The ID buzz. You can't even man. say that because it's gonna crash. <laughs> Mayor tire. I I don't know. Mayor. Tire irons cross again. May our tires cross the finish line again. All right. A little bit works. too complex, but yeah, sure, whatever. That wasn't that even that long. long. No. May our. You just said may our tires cross the finish line again. Yeah, that's not long. Why they never crossed it the first time? No, they did because if you're saying again, that implies that. The racers did cross the the finish line, but you can't have two winners at one point, so that doesn't make. But, but that also kind of implies that they may not cross the finish line because they crashed. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is just horrible. Ouch. Whenever it's about it's cars, me. there's no way you could do. Now it's me. Oh God. There, there's it's it's a car it's a car podcast. There's no no way that you can end this non-violently. Look, Merrick paths cross again. Okay, let's just. That's still on. violent. No, I. That's in the, the context of cars. Realize, that's still that's, violent. That is the regular cross-gen exit. Let's exit already. We're gonna run up against our four-minute time limit. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever. All right, peace out.